Hi, I'm Dr. David Cody, and in this video we'll be examining Paula's hands. Paula has pain in her hands due to underlying osteoarthritis. Paula, is it okay if I examine your hands? Absolutely, yes. So uh, to start with, I'm going to ask with the patient to have their hands on the pillow, palms facing down, which is a good place to start. And then we're going to have a look at the hands. Uh, we're going to start looking at any obvious swelling, deformity, muscle wasting and scars. Is there any swelling at the distal or proximal interphalangeal joints? Are the swellings hard and bony? Is there any squaring at the base of the thumb? And are the changes symmetrical? So I'm going to have a look to see if there's any nail changes, any changes of psoriasis or vasculitis. Look at any skin changes for thinning, bruising, or signs of long-term steroid use. Can you just turn your hands over? Again, I'm going to have a look with the hands turned over to see if there's any problems with hand movement at the wrist or the elbow. I'm going to look again for muscle wasting, scars such as carpal tunnel release. And then I'm going to have a look at the thena and hypothena eminences for power and muscle bulk. I'm going to gently touch over the thena and hypothena eminences. Does that feel normal when I touch those? Yes. Yeah to see if there's any sensory changes at all. So as part of feel, I'll just assess the patient's temperature over and above the joints. I also like to check the patient's pulse in case some of the hand pain is caused by ischemia. And I'm gonna start feeling by gently squeezing across the MCP joints. I'm carefully watching the patient's face to see if there's any tenderness or discomfort. And then I'm going to bi-manually palpate any of the MCP or PIP joints or DIP joints that look swollen or painful. Are these sore at all? No, no. So in Paula's case, the MCP don't appear to be swollen or tender. The PIP joints, however, do look swollen. And these feel more like a hard bony swelling rather than the soft rubbery swelling that you might get in rheumatoid synovitis. Are they tender at all? No. So I'll compare one joint to the other. I can even compare it to my own if I'm, if I'm not sure whether it's swollen or not. I bamp, bi manually palpate both the patient's wrists also. And it's a good opportunity to run your hand up their arm and have a feel above the elbow to see if there's any swellings on the uh, extensor surface, any rheumatoid nodules, or feel for any plaques of psoriasis, etc. Next, I'll ask the patient to extend their hands. If you could pick your hands up for me. That's great. So we want to see, do the, do the fingers extend fully against gravity? Next, I'm going to just ask you to turn your hands over and make a fist. So here I'm checking for full finger flexion. Can they fully extend and can they fully flex their fingers? And you can see that Paul is struggling to make a fist on both sides. I'm just gonna check wrist movement also. Can I just get you to put your hands together? And the other way around. That's great, thank you. I'll also check the range of movement at the thumb CMC joint. Which is very restricted. And then I'll go on and assess function. So if I could just ask you to squeeze my hands for me, hard as you can, and relax. So there's a reduced power grip and just nip me with your fingers. And that side, squeeze hard as you can. And actually, pincer grip is quite well preserved. And then we can ask the patient to pick a coin up, for example, is that okay? And with the other side, that's great. To check functional assessment. So you could also ask them to hold a pen or a cup, for example, or to do a button up. So thank you very much, that's the end of the examination. So Paula here has a symmetrical arthropathy involving mainly the distal and proximal interphalangeal joints. 
Function overall is quite well preserved, although she struggles to make a full power grip. The squaring at the base of the thumb with restricted thumb range of movement. The sparing of the MCP joints. But classically, there's some swelling, a hard bony swelling over the PIP joints with something that we call Bouchard's nodes, which is the hard bony swellings. And sometimes in the, the DIP joints, you'll see Hebberden's nodes, which uh, Paula's got on the thumb here. These findings are all compatible with a diagnosis of osteoarthritis.